What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about the best shoes for wide feet. That's a really, really important video for myself and I really want to make it because I have extremely wide feet, very wide midfoot. I need to size up one size with all of my pairs. So I really want to show you the pairs that fit me the best and that don't hurt my wide feet because it can be a really, really big pain if the shoes are too narrow and they're pinching into your feet constantly while playing. First pair of the video might be a bit of a surprise as it's the Nike KD16. The toe area is actually really, really wide in my opinion. The midfoot takes some break in, especially this part right here. This one here, the outrigger or the caging, so to say. It will dig into your feet a little bit, but after breaking, the materials are really, really soft and will confirm to the shape of your feet very nicely. At least it was the case for me. They actually work pretty damn well for me and I love playing with them. Then one pair I haven't got with me here is the MB1. I actually have two colorways and I had a little bit of an injury on my right foot where I had a bruise actually right where my feet are extremely wide. That sometimes happens when my feet or when the shoes I wear are too narrow for my feet. And the only shoe that wouldn't hurt me while playing was the MB1. The materials are extremely soft and they have a very wide forefoot, so I can definitely recommend them. I know they're an older shoe, but they're still releasing colorways, so they're definitely a great option. Another shoe I haven't got here with me, the Curry 11, I'm showing the Curry 9s. They are also great, but they released two years ago already. The 11s, they're still releasing colorways and they're great. They have a wide forefoot and midfoot, so they're a perfect option. Just watch out, the flow setup is a very, very special setup. It makes you stop extremely hard, but doesn't work well on dusty cords, so just watch out for that. Then moving on to probably another surprise in this video, another shoe from Nike. Let's get those out of the way. The Nike Jab 1. Yes, I know that they're pretty narrow at first, but if you maybe go up half a size or as full size like I did, probably a lot of you have those same issues, then these will be great after breaking. The midfoot area is actually relatively wide and the toe box, because the materials are relatively soft after breaking, will confirm to your feet very nicely. So they are a nice fit for white feet, at least in my opinion. I know this might be a surprise and a lot of you won't agree with that, but they actually worked really, really well for me. So I'd be interested to hear your thoughts from your, my fellow white footers out there. Did you try the jaw ones? How did they feel for you? Breaking was a little bit of a pain for me, but not that bad actually. Went away relatively quickly. I even have a second colorway because I like the performance a lot as well. Then another pair, I mentioned the MB1s already. Here we have the MB3s. The Puma MB2 wasn't as good in my opinion because they had a little bit of a more narrow shape, especially here in the midfoot and the toe box also was relatively wide, so that's okay, but the midfoot area was a little bit more narrow. I still like playing in them, but the MB3, in my opinion, are better for wide feet. There's actually also a pretty nice trick that you can do if you have a certain area that keeps pinching. For example, here you can see this extra, this extra lace loop right here and you can tie your laces in a manner of just leaving out that lace loop, I get my other pair of jaw ones. I did that for the break-in, give me a second. So to better explain what I meant, I got my second colorway of the jaw ones. You can leave out, this, let's say this is the lace loop that's pinching against your foot. You can leave it out and you can lace them essentially like this. I'll put, I'll place them a little bit more tightly so that you can see. So what did I do here? I left this lace loop normally, then I left the first one normally as well, I have the X here, and then you can see there's like a big hole right here. And if you compare it with this jar one, that's not the case. So you can see that I just left out this one area where my foot is really, really wide and where the shoes kept pinching my feet. So that's something I can recommend. Even if you have shoes that have a wide mid or a wide forefoot, they still pinch. Just leave out that extra lace loop or that one lace loop where the shoe is the tightest around your foot and it will be way, way better and way comfier for your feet. Then one of my favorite shoes, probably the best all-time shoe for wide feet that I've tried, the Harden Volume 7. They have such a nice wide midfoot and also the toe box is relatively wide. And the materials are so soft and padded, it's really a comfortable, comfortable ride. The only thing you need to watch out for is this outrigger right here. The Harden Volume 8 has a little bit of a more narrow fit in my opinion, because this EVA sidewall also goes inwards a little bit and you also have this outrigger here. So you need to be careful if your foot is extremely wide in this area, like right after your pinky toe, it can be painful. So just try them on in store before. The sevens, even though my foot is actually relatively wide in this area, it didn't hurt. So I can really, really highly recommend them. Maybe you can get them on sale. They're still available at certain websites and an overall awesome performer, especially for wide feet. Another shoe from Nike that I forgot about before that's actually pretty nice for white feet is the Nike GT Hustle 2. They have a very wide toe box for a Nike shoe and the midfoot is also relatively wide. 
I liked playing them. The only issue I have with these shoes, that's also why they are laced so tightly in comparison to my other shoes is they don't have a shank plate, which means you can really fold them together however you want. And I don't like that in my basketball shoes. I prefer some stiffer setups like, let's say, I know this is an extreme setup, but the Way of Weight 10 with the full length carbon fiber plate, they are really, really stiff. You can't move them around in whatever direction you want. That means they have great torsional support and you get a lot more energy out of the shoe. Also from the Jar 1, for example, they're very, very stiff. It's hard to bend them and I prefer setups like this compared to the one on the GT Hustle 2. But strictly for wide feet, they are a great option. Then we also have another shoe, New Balance, another new brand, the Fresh Foam BB Volume 2. In my opinion, one of the most underrated shoes on the market. Very, very nice for wide feet. Just watch out if you wide, have a wide midfoot. This two, these two lace loops right here, they can be a little bit tight. They can dig into your feet. So just watch out for that. Apart from that, performance is really great. Pushing setup is one of the comfiest on the market in combination with the materials. The traction performance is also very nice. They have an extremely loud squeak. That's important to you. And the fit for wide feet is great. That being said, that's pretty much the best options from the newly released models. I'm also going to go over some of the older models right now. If you can find them somewhere, they also have great fit for wide feet. The number one would be the Nike PG6. I know it's going to be really, really hard to find those, but you can see here already the toe box is extremely wide and also the midfoot is extremely wide. So they are an awesome, awesome model for wide feet. Sadly, they stopped the PG line. They went for Sabrina's, for books, for Jaws actually. It's kind of sad that they don't make them anymore, but I heard they will retro the older PGs. But if you can find a pair of PG6 anywhere, I can highly, highly recommend them. They're really awesome performers. Then another shoe, actually a newly released model that's also nice for wide feet, is the Anthony Edwards one. I had them on my list, but I didn't talk about them because they are kind of narrow in the toe box, but the midfoot is nice and wide. So for me, they are actually perfect. But if you have wide toe area or a wide forefoot, then these might be a little bit narrow. So just watch out for that. I know they look stiff, but the materials are actually really, really soft and will confirm to your feet as well, even though it's a plastic. So these are also a nice option for wide feet. Another good option that's been out for a while is the Wave Weight All City 11 Volume 2, but also the regular All City 11. They have a very wide midfoot here, even though you have this outrigger, it's still a lot of space for your midfoot. So again, another shoe I can highly recommend if you have a wide midfoot. Another shoe that is surprisingly wide after breaking because the materials on certain colorways are softer, like the full leather uppers are not as good for wide feet, but the mesh or synthetic uppers actually bend out quite a bit. The LeBron 21, I know the fit of the shoe in general is rather narrow, but we have those softer materials on certain colorways with the synthetic uppers that will confirm to your feet, that will soften up in certain areas. So at the start of playing with them, I actually had some pain here in the midfoot area, but now after I've broken them in, I've actually have got another colorway because I like the fit and they were pretty comfortable. You can also try the trick with the laces that helped me a lot breaking in my second colorway and they are surprisingly nice for white feet as well. Before we end the video, I'm just gonna show some shoes that you should definitely stay away from if you have white feet. The number one option is the Zion Free. Doesn't matter if it's the SE or the regular Zion Free. I think the regular ones are here somewhere as well. There we go. They are so goddamn narrow that even people with narrow feet have pain in them. So if you have wide feet, that's really the one shoe I would stay away from. In general, shoes with drop in midsoles, like for example, the Wave Weight 8083 Ultra, they are usually more narrow because you have the drop in that comes up on the side. So like an outrigger on the drop in already. And that usually pinches right into my midfoot, but also here in the toe area, it can pinch and can hurt. So I wouldn't recommend getting shoes with drop-in midsoles. Sadly, Kobe's also have a very narrow fit. The Kobe 6 is kind of an exception because the insoles and the materials will confirm to your feet, but they are still very snug and narrow. So we definitely recommend going half size up or even a full size like I do. And even with a full size, this part right here is digging into my midfoot. That's why I haven't played with these as much yet. And some other shoes that I would stay away from. Great performers, but sadly, very, very narrow. The Rigor Austin Reeves one, great retail price, $100, but extremely, extremely narrow. Now, with that being said, that's all the shoes I can recommend and the shoes I would say you should stay away from. For my sizing, lengthwise, a size 13 would fit me best. 
does shoes with size 14 that I usually get, like my big toe is right here. So there really is around here and there really is a lot of dead space in the forefoot, but my side of the foot or the side wall of my foot are really going into the walls of the shoe. That's why I have to go that full size up, which is also my true size essentially. Let me know if you also have those issues or sizing issues. It would be very interesting to hear how you handle it. Do you go for different sizes for Nike or Adidas or Puma? I would be really interested to hear that. And also let me know which videos you want to see next. You want to see best shoes for narrow feet. You want to see shoes for a high arch or for flat feet. Just let me know, leave a like, subscribe to my channel and see you next time for, for more performance reviews.